widely regarded as a top NFL expert analyst. Mr. Sims is a quarterback skills expert and provides evaluations to top NFL personnel directors. Please join me in welcoming Phil Sims. The thing about Bill, what I was going to tell you before I got sidetracked once again, uh, we played the films. We played Detroit, 1988. It was a really good game by us. I played one of my best games in my career. We watched the tape, and after the tape was over, I go, wow, it's even better on tape, which usually doesn't happen. This is pretty exciting. I'm sitting in my locker. It's Monday night. I'm sitting there. I'm the only guy left in the locker room. We've practiced. We've done everything. And I'm thinking, I can't wait to go home. My wife is a great cook. I'm going to watch Monday night football. I'm going to root against both teams because that's the way it is. Hell, I want them all to lose. Lose. And if you got to win, I hope you get beat up in case we play in three weeks. You lose a – but so, you know, I'm thinking, man, this is going to be great. And all of a sudden, I hear these shuffling of the feet coming. My, my locker was up against the wall, so you couldn't see me. And Bill comes walking by, and at the time, in 88, he still was smoking. And he was, you know, way overweight. But as he walks by, he sees me, he looks down, and he goes, hey, boy. He never said, hey, Phil. How are you, Philip? Mr. Anything. It was always boy or son. I couldn't differentiate if I did really well, it was, hey, son. If he didn't like what I was doing, it was boy. I, I'm not sure. He goes, hey, boy. And I said, hey, coach, I didn't know you were here. Good, you know, what's going on? Well, you know, you did okay yesterday. And then, like, the words came out of my mouth. And as they were coming out, I was going, you are the biggest dumb thing. Uh, why? I knew it as soon as I was saying it. I go, okay, hell, I was great. Yeah, yeah. You never say anything like that to Bill. And Bill goes, oh, son. Oh. I go, oh, come on, coach. What are you kidding? You know and I know that I can't play any better than that. Come on. Tell me it was a good game. You know, now I'm going to fight back a little. You know, son, disappoints me to think that my expectations for you are higher than the ones that you have for yourself. Oh. That's right. That's right. And as he says it, puffs that cigarette and walks right into the back to the coach's locker room and I sat there I'm telling you I was as mad as I'd ever been in my life and I thought you know I'm gonna go back here in that coach's locker room I'm gonna kick his butt I'm really thinking that I said no who's gonna know it's just him and me down here I'd kick his you know that I'm like furious so I get in my car and I'm driving home the whole way I'm thinking I'll show him I'll show him that I can play better than that that wasn't my best of course you know giant fans you know I doesn't get any better than that uh, but but it really, I played right into his hands. And then, you know, it stuck with me for really the rest of the year. Probably the best year I ever played, it was in 1988. It stuck with me because I never forgot. I said, this son of a gun didn't think I was playing, that I wasn't, you know, meet my expectations. I'll show him. And so, but that's what he wanted. That's what he wanted. You know, we, we laugh about it now. He goes, oh, he says, Sims, you were so easy. God, you were easy. You know, yeah, I just tweak you and you were good for six games. And <laughs> so, but he had me, you know, and I thought, you know, of course, now I look back and go, wow, it was a great lesson I learned. It really was, you know, never to be satisfied. That's all he was trying to teach me. Don't think you're good. Don't be satisfied. Keep working like, act like you're poor, you know, what, that, that, that's his whole thing. And it really was a, it was a great thing to learn. The other one he taught me was this. We're on the practice field and we're kind of in a rough spot. It's 1989. The offensive line's beat up and not playing well. We're in practice. We practice really hard. And I'm getting hit in practice and stuff more than I should. And, you know, he stops practice. Stop. And he stands in front of me. And he gets the offensive lineman in front of him. And he just is killing him, saying things to him. You know, so-and-so, I, I got a ticket in my drawer up in my desk. Don't, it's to you to send your butt home. If you don't play better, don't tell your wife it's my fault. It's your fault. I got the ticket, son. Don't make me give you, um, oh, and he means it. He probably did have the ticket, you know, but he told the truth. That's what he was about. He really told the truth. It really hurt your feelings all the time, but it was the truth. And he went on and on. I'm standing behind him going, get him, Bill. That's right. Protect me better. That's what you got to do, guys, I'm thinking. Because when he yelled at you in practice, everybody else was allowed to laugh at the person he was yelling at. He, he'd let you laugh. He'd look at him and go, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. And so when he gets done yelling at him, which is one of the greatest things I've ever seen. He turns around, looks at me, and he goes, and it's your fault. 
Well, of course it is. Of course, it's effing Sims' fault. And he goes, you know, these guys, Sims, they used to fear you. They were afraid to let their guy hit you and knock you on the ground because they knew if that happened, you'd be in their grill and you'd get them and you'd let them. But no, 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 Sims, now you're their, you're their friend. Take them out to dinner. Buy them another gift. Pat them on the butt. It's okay if your guy keeps hitting me. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You're, you're going to be on injured reserve here in about another week, whatever. So, again, after he got done, I didn't even say anything that time because I got in my car as I was driving home that night. I said, he's right. He's right. I got too close to the players. You know, if you're going to be the leader, you got to be the leader. You can't be their friend and their leader. You know, there's a little mudge in there, but you, you just got to get it done. So it was a great lesson I learned, and I try to think of it all the time, to whatever it is. If you're, if you're going to lead, do it. You can't do it halfway. If you're going to be the father, be the father. As I tell my kids all the time, I am not your friend. It's not working the way I'd hope, but <laughs> you know, listen. But it really is the truth. So I learned that it was something I've learned. I even use it in my TV stuff now. If you, you know, were on your own team and you know, first pick in their prime, who would be the, your teammate you'd pick? First pick. Am I playing on the team or I'm the, play, I'm the general playing, manager? You're playing. You're the quarterback. Well, hell, I think I still might take Peyton Manning. <laughs> Man, because he does it all. So it's hard. To, but the first player uh, playing now? No, no. Oh, well, it, it, me? Oh, then it would be two, there's only two players that come to mind right away. It would be Lawrence Taylor or Reggie White, one of those two, because they were dominant for a long Reggie White was an unbelievable football player. He hit me twice to start a game in Philadelphia. We got a big Philadelphia Eagles fan in here, too. I'm not going to point him out. Yeah, there he clapped. That away, Mark. <laughs> you know, the Eagles, they couldn't wait to get rid of Donovan McNabb. Okay, you got your wish. We'll see. But uh, we're playing down in Philadelphia. It's a late game. It rained. The turf is wet. The worst field in the history of sports was Vet Stadium. The worst. I mean, I'd literally come up to the line of scrimmage every time and get on the center and turn and would look back to make sure I wasn't going to run over a big hump, a seam, or whatever, so I'd fall down. What's behind me? Oh, second base. I can cover second base. <laughs> but they were great. We threw a play-action pass, the first play of the game. I dropped back, and before I can even get my foot even close, here comes Reggie White, just full steam. And I take the ball, throw it out of bounds. He hits me. I hit the ground, and I slide for five yards because it's wet. And I look at my right tackle, Carl Nelson. I said, Carl, the first play? We're going to start this crap the first play? Oh, and you know, Carl's back there. Oh, it's okay, Phil. You okay? You okay? He's helping me up. You always know who blows the block because they're the ones helping the quarterback up. <laughs> so the next play, same thing. I drop back. I can't even get the ball out of my hand to get it to the sideline. It falls about five yards from me. Reggie White hits me. I'm sitting on the ground, wet now after two, two plays. And there's Carl reaching his hand out to pick me up again. I go, Carl. I said, is it? Carl, six foot seven. And I don't know why I said these things to him. I said, Carl, is this crap going to go on all night long? And Reggie White was standing next to him. <laughs> Reggie White talks like Muhammad Ali. You ever, That's right. I'm going to be back here all night. 